Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today, like I said yesterday, but I'm gonna say it again today, is hopefully the day we're gonna be finishing that bad boy right there. Yesterday, it just, it got way too hot, and I was not hydrated, and I just, I, I kinda, I overdid it in the sun a little bit, so I couldn't come out back outside in the evening and finish it up, which is totally fine. So we're gonna go ahead and do it today. All of the, ow, kittens. The whole structure of this thing is built and all we need to do is just wrap it with its various types of wrapping. We're going to do a base layer of, of um, chicken wire on the whole thing and then we're going to wrap the base layer with hardware cloth just to make sure no little raccoon hands are going to be able to reach in and grab them. And then we're going to wrap it also in a tarp just to give them protection from the sun because for the next once we put them in there for about a week they're going to stay in there uh, but then after that once they get acclimated to the area then we'll open it up and the meat birds are going to be able to roam freely once we get a fence also put up it's just going to be like a temporary fence probably end up using my um my premier one netting so that's kind of the plan for now. Just a little bit ago, we did check on and package up the ground beef that we dehydrated together yesterday. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I did. And then I'm just gonna bring you back and we're gonna go ahead and start wrapping this thing up. So I was a little bit late to ride this morning. Ah! Um, and, but this stuff here, golden, this stuff looks great. Yeah, this stuff is done. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and take this and put it in some kind of a container. Make sure everything is super duper dry. And we're gonna put it, I think this will fit, this should fit in a quart size jar, right? Can you hear how dry that is? So then we're gonna put, I'm gonna, I, I can't find it right now, but I need to find my dry dry pack. Um, it's basically some moisture absorber. You keep it in there and it will um, help to absorb any moisture that might be left behind. Put it on here and into the dry storage. And also yesterday, remember that the liquid that we poured off, you can see the, the stuff that's at the bottom. This stuff has really good flavor. It's really good. And then this here is the fat that we got off of that three pounds. Okay, so for this step, I have a pan of water and we're gonna take uh, just something that we can kind of slip in here and pop this puck out, right? <laughs> the gelatin really wants to stay on there. And take this and put it into the pot and we're gonna heat it up slowly uh, just until this puck melts. That's all you're doing here. You're just trying to get the puck to melt and we're gonna put it back in the fridge. I learned this technique from Guildbrook Farms. Yeah, Guildbrook Farm, Farms a long time ago. And it works pretty well. So we're just we're just gonna go ahead and warm this pot up and then um, this is gonna be uh, going into my lunch. You can see how gel gelatinous it is. It's just gonna have a lot of good gut healing benefits to it. So I'm just gonna pop this in the fridge until I'm ready to eat. All right, so this has completely um, broken down here. And so now what we're, oops, that little piece there. So now we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna set this aside, let it cool a little bit, and then we're gonna pop this in the freezer, uh, in the fridge. Well, you could put it in the freezer, honestly, if you wanted to. That's not a bad idea. Maybe I'll do that. But you just wanna get it to cool to where this stuff solidifies enough. And you don't wanna let it boil or warm up too much because then you can kind of break down the fat a little bit and it's just not gonna be, it's not gonna be as good for as long. So I was actually really excited to find out. I thought this was a 75 foot roll. It's actually a 150 foot roll. So I'll be able to do all the overlapping I want. Cause I was, I was trying to figure out how I could actually with only a 75 foot roll, cause you gotta wrap this three times, 16 feet long. How am I gonna, how am I gonna be able to pull it out? Right? And, um, and be able to cover the ends. So, that made my day. I appreciate how well they wrap these things so it doesn't come unraveled, but like trying to actually unravel this thing is just silliness.
the whole arch is now wrapped in the um, in the chicken wire and I have it very secured with all the zip ties. Robert came, saw me, Robert was making some breakfast and he saw me out the window struggling. So he came out here and helped me um, get the chicken wire up top and I'm really glad I did because that probably saved me like two hours. And um, so that was super helpful and then it got super hot and sweaty so I sent him inside. I just, I told, I, I told him I could do this part by myself. I just felt bad. He was super sweaty. Good grief. It's already 1230. I haven't even, been, I've barely even started editing video. So I think I'm going to go ahead and um, pick this up a little bit later. I got the second eight foot long um, cattle panel put on the top there. So the whole thing is is very solid. I'm gonna go ahead and just staple the poultry wire, the chicken wire. I still have to do my food preservation. I don't really want to be awake. I don't, don't want to be awake super late. So we're just gonna do as much as we can do until I just feel like going inside. Hi. You're doing the thing, right? Yeah. Is it working? Yeah. Good. Cool. I'll put the neutral on. Yeah. So I didn't get as much done as I would ho as I hoped, <laughs> but I did get a fair amount done. Getting these, the, getting the the chicken wire snug and stapled along the baseboards is actually kind of difficult. I got the bottom, um, I got the bottom layer along the back also put on with chicken wire, and I'm just getting eaten alive by bugs. I got the pork. Hopefully, it was not bad, and we can can it. So let's go. Real quick, uh, one thing. I am getting ready to can up the pork. Well, really I'm getting ready to eat, but I went to the post office today and I'm super excited because somebody actually sent something to me for my Amazon wish list. I thought I'd share it with you guys because I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I never in my wildest dreams would have imagined somebody would want to send me anything. So, um, <laughs> that's pretty cool. This is actually from Hawkins Hills and I created a wish list specifically because she wanted to send me something. So like it is the super sweetest thing in the world. Like I did, didn't have a wish list because it never occurred to me that anybody would want me to get one. So I figured I would go ahead and share this because it's the sweetest. I have no idea what's in here. So I'm really excited. <gasps> she got me the funnels. These are like little funnels. They work great when you're, um, when you're doing like little tinctures and when you're, or you even when you're bottling something, if you, it's just, I really wanted these for the tinctures though, cause I really want to start making like tinctures and they come in the teeniest little bottles with the tiniest little openings and being able to have this little funnel that you can accurately pour something into something that has such a teeny tiny little opening like this. It's so exciting. Okay. Ooh, it's a book. Which book is it? Homebrewed vinegar. Oh, I know, my gosh. I am so excited about this. I found this one on there. I made apple cider vinegar a while ago and I was really intrigued by it and I thought it was really cool, but then I'm starting to see all these people making all of these different kinds of vinegars and I didn't even realize that you could do it. Like you could make like strawberry vinegar or mango vinegar. You can make all different kinds of vinegar. This one's, it's, uh, it, Carrot, ginger, beet, brown banana, pineapple, corn cob, honey, and apple cider vinegar. It says, this is how to ferment 60 delicious varieties of vinegar. I'm so excited for this. As soon as, as soon as the garden and the homestead starts to slow down a little bit, like I'm gonna super dive into this and I'm gonna make a couple of different, different vinegars this winter. And of course I'm gonna bring you guys along for it, but I'm so excited. Thank you so much. This is the sweetest thing ever. One other thing that came in the mail was actually a card and it is from, it says it's from, where is it? Uh, Snow Gardener 307. 
and she just sent me a nice hand written hand note and then there's an hilarious little sticker. Hi, oh, isn't that so cool? Thank you both. That was the sweetest thing. You totally made my day when I went to the post office this morning. Okay, so I'm gonna eat some food so we can actually get to our canning session. I just was, I was busting at the seams with excitement, so I had to share that with you guys. We're back in the kitchen and I'm finally ready to make our, it's a barbecue pulled pork recipe. We're canning it. Uh, this is not gonna be like a how-to canning type video. I'll give you like the, the recipe and, and the basic instructions for how, how I'm doing it, but I'm actually getting this recipe from my sister. She's over at the Hamakua Homestead. You wanna make sure, make sure that you guys go and check her out. I'm gonna link her down below. And um, her, I, I watched her video, obviously when it came out, she's my sister, I watch her videos. And I did a different pulled pork recipe and I really wasn't happy with it. So I'm gonna go ahead, well, it's not that I wasn't happy with it. It was just, it was a little bit on the dry side. I, so I wanna go ahead and try the recipe that she used. It looked like it had a lot more sauce to it. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a try. So I'm gonna bring you guys in close. We're gonna assemble all of our ingredients. I'm gonna do a triple batch simply because I bought one pork shoulder, uh, pork shoulder. Why do they call it a pork shoulder butt? Really? It's confusing. Shoulder butt? But anyways, so I bought one of them at Costco, not realizing it was 14 pounds. So by default, I have to make a triple batch, which I don't think I'm gonna mind. Sorry for the background noise. We're sterilizing the jars in the background. But we have... Um, I'm gonna just the, the basic ingredients for this recipe without considering the fact that I tripled it, okay? So it's uh, one and a half cups of onions, one and a half cups of ketchup, half a cup of brown sugar, a quarter of a cup of apple cider vinegar, two tablespoons of the W sauce, two tablespoons of brown mustard, two tablespoons of honey, and um, it said three cloves of garlic, but we'll probably put a little bit more than the equivalent of three cloves of garlic. And it, um, we're gonna be using this, not regular cloves. So we're just gonna go ahead, put it in the pot, and then uh, it says to put it in the pot, mix it up, and that's and uh, warm it. And we need to uh, cut up the pork. So we're just gonna do that real quick, black. Pretty big chunks. And I feel like this is one of the easiest like recipes to prep. Like it took almost no time and it was really easy. We're gonna put all the pork in here, but we're not gonna include the big chunks of fat that we cut off. These are gonna be our preservation project tomorrow. And I'll show you how we're gonna take these and actually turn them into usable, delicious lard. We're gonna get this all mixed up and we're gonna let it, bring it up to a simmer. We're gonna let it simmer for five minutes. And while we're doing that, we're gonna get everything cleaned up, sanitized, and, um, probably throw in another round of jars to sterilize. All right, so this the, the jars are sterilized, sanitized. You don't have to do this for pressure canning. I just, I prefer to, uh, and so I do. Uh, it's not necessary, just make sure they're clean. So, and then we also have our, um, the pork mixture has been simmering for at least five minutes. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jar them up. And uh, we're gonna be using today, of course, our four jars canning lids, which is what I always use for canning ever since I discovered them. So um, if you guys are interested in checking out four jars canning lids, they are in my area, the four jars canning lids before the discount code that I can give to you. Um, they are cheaper than my local store for the regular name brand kind. Um, so if you guys use my, if you guys use the link below and my, my coupon code for minted 10, you'll get an extra 10% off making it an even better deal. These lids are fantastic. They have a nice thick uh, bond on them. They have a nice thick metal. These things are just phenomenal. The company is amazing and I really recommend you guys use these. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and get to canning. I'm just gonna angle you down and we're just gonna bust through all these.
So you saw we got the meat just kind of separated um, out amongst all the jars. So now we're just gonna top it off. Hopefully we have enough sauce here. I think, I'm pretty sure we do. I'd be really surprised if we didn't. And you saw me just kind of fiddling with it and just getting the pieces all in the right places. I might have to take out a couple pieces once I get it debubbled, but we'll see how it goes. Some of these are a little colder than I thought. But uh, if you have an extra jar, that would be great, but I grabbed all the pint-sized jars that I have in the house. So, all the empty ones, I should say. I can't find my, my debubbler, so we're using the chopstick today. So I definitely know what my sister was talking about with the messy rims, and in her video, she cleaned the rims uh, twice. I actually had to do it three separate times, uh, just to make sure that the towel came back kind of mostly clean. Like, it was a lot, but I have a feeling this is really gonna be worth it. All right, you guys, we are finished. We have all the jars are in the canner there. It's cranked up to high. It's gonna come up to pressure and we're gonna um, process it for 75 minutes because they're pints. Um, okay, so remember what I said earlier, this is not a canning how-to. I'm not giving you all the instructions. If you're new to canning, don't follow this, this video. Make sure that you head over to the Hamaku Homestead. She has a much more detailed, in-depth video on how to actually process this recipe. So I hope that you guys will go and check her out. She has some amazing stuff. I might be a little biased. She is my little sister, but still, she does have a great video on this and that's why I'm making this. I do have this jar that is left over. This one I'm gonna pop in the fridge and then tomorrow I'm probably gonna cook this up or hubby's gonna hook, cook this up. But anyways, this is probably gonna be his food for tomorrow. If you do enjoy this video, I like to do all kinds of videos on canning, freezing, dehydrating, and fermenting, as well as showing you guys how you can actually use that preserved food in your everyday cooking. We just moved to our 30 acre homestead in Southern Missouri. <laughs> we're transplants from Washington State. We're just bringing along for all the things that we're doing to turn our home into a homestead. If that sounds awesome to you, make sure you click this link right here. This is what tells YouTube that you want to come back and check out our videos in the future. Up here is a video that Mr. Google Pants thinks that you're going to enjoy. This here is my last um, Every Bit Counts Challenge. Make sure you check that one out. Up here is the Every Bit Counts Challenge. Uh, my videos for the Every, Day, Every Bit Counts Challenge. Make sure you check that one out for y'all the awesomeness since the beginning of August. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.